Use of various hormones is extensive in grape than in any other crop. But one should be very careful about the stage of use and the concentration of these hormones. We find the problem of bud breaking in some varieties of grape after October pruning. Smearing 2% thiurea or hydrogen cyanamide called Domex is helpful to overcome this problem. This hormone solution is applied to last three buds of the canes with the help of cotton swab. These Bangalore blue vines are applied with Domex. To restrict the vegetative growth of the shoot, Lehosin or CCC is useful. This increases the chance of fertile buds. Gibberellic acid or GA3 application reduces the number of flowers and also results in elongation of berries and bunches. Hormones like combine, BA and CPPU increase the size of the berries. The schedule and the concentration of different hormones for balanced crop, quality bunches and berries are like this. Use CCC if and only if it is necessary. Decide the amount of flowers to be retained and use GA3 hormone maybe for three times. Do not use GA3 if the climate is cloudy. Otherwise, excess flower shedding may affect the yield. Do not use GA3 for full bloom stage till the fruit setting completes. Combined hormone is an alcohol medium and can be mixed directly with GA3 and applied together. Stop using hormones before one month of the harvest to avoid chemical residues in the berries. Hormone application will not bring any result if the nourishment to the vine is inadequate. If sufficient quantity of organic manure and oil cake is provided, the development of bunches and berries will be good even without hormone application. All these hormones may be applied by spraying or by dipping bunches. Spraying is easy and consumes less labor. But the reach of the solution to all bunches and berries will not be uniform. However, due to labor shortage, most of the farmers follow spraying for hormone treatment. Nutrient requirement for grape wine depends on variety, soil type, climate condition, quality of water and age of the wine etc. Deciding the dosage of nutrients based on soil, water, leaf and petiole analysis will avoid unnecessary application of fertilizers. Further, the absorption will be better if the fertilizer is given through irrigation water. Nitrogen increases vegetative growth. Excessive nitrogen reduces flowering and hence number of bunches. Phosphorus is useful for flower bud initiation. Potash is helpful for the maturity of the canes, sufficient flowering and better berry quality. Excess dosage of any one nutrient will affect the absorption of other nutrient. 120 kg of nitrogen, 120 kg of phosphorus and 320 kg of potash per acre per year is the general recommendation of fertilizers for grape crop. Absorption will be better if the fertilizers are applied in a ring two feet away from the base of the vine. Use of nitrogen in the form of calcium ammonium nitrate after pruning and urea afterwards is recommended. It is better to avoid ammonium sulfate since it increases the acidity of the soil. Use potash in the form of sulfate of potash. MOP may cause chloride toxicity in grape. Flower bud initiation takes place in 40 to 45 days after summer pruning. Analyze the leaf or petiole at this stage to know the nutritional status of the vine. This helps with the adjustment of fertilizer dosage leading to better crop and yield. Micronutrient deficiency is not a major problem in grape. Hence, take up corrective measures if and only if the deficiency symptoms are seen. Water requirement for grape wine depends on soil type, climatic condition and crop stage etc. Excess irrigation 
leads to increased chance of fungal diseases. Graft plant on dog-rich rootstock needs less water. Drip irrigation is better for optimum water supply. Even we can give soluble fertilizers through drip irrigation. Hence, most of the farmers follow this system. Fertigation dosage and the schedule is like this.